So what are two downsides of Tesla energy after a storm? One, everybody's going to want to talk about it and, and learn more. And two, you're going to have lots of friends who want to come over and use your power. I had a buddy come over to use the internet and send some emails last night, and my brother-in-law and his dog are sleeping in the basement. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself with the clickbait title. I'm sure I'm going to get all sorts of comments bashing it below. Before we jump in, just wanted to send my best wishes to you know everybody who's having bigger issues than we are with the storm. You know, I know down south it it really hit pretty hard and, and took out some homes and people's took people's lives. So. You know, all the best to them and their families and hope everybody makes it through this all right. Good morning, everybody. Darcy and I just went to check out the neighborhood the morning after Isaias, quite a storm. We had 80 mile an hour winds, not much rain, which I think saved us from a lot of trees down. But uh, Tesla Solar and Power Walls are doing its job. So if you can hear the background noise, that's actually intentional this morning. It's to show the difference between the historical way of taking care of your power during a outage, um, whole home or partial home or portable generators versus our house, which is running incredibly silent right now. But, um, you know, it's, it's funny just how loud they are and you know, how many people around here have them given that there's a, a fragile power grid. So a little bit more on those generators you hear on the background. My buddy um, who lives right down the street actually has uh, one a portable running outside right now, but he gets frustrated that he has to fill it with fuel. He started looking at generators. The generator sales guy actually said you should get Tesla Solar, which I thought was quite funny. Um, but because he's already wired for a generator, I think he's going to go that route. Um, but I'm surprised at just how much they are. So. You know, his quote was anywhere from 10 to 12,000 and his house is, I don't know, maybe 60% of the size of ours. So I'm guessing if we had gone that route, ours would have been in the 12 to $15,000 range, which is crazy. So I can't remember what I used in my math as the offset for the power walls, but you know, it might've been in the six or $8,000 range. So. You know, that just makes me more happy with the decision and the direction we went. So very quick timeline of how is AES hit us um, on northern coastal New Jersey. Uh, storm rolled in with a bunch of rain around uh, 9.30. Power went out by 10.30. I had gotten the storm watch from Tesla, so the batteries charged to full. It came on kind of early day yesterday, actually. Um, and to confirm one of my previous questions, they will charge from the grid when Stormwatch comes on. So I actually had to be very careful because I was running solar at the same time, even though I don't have permission to operate, to make sure I didn't go past 100 and feed back to the grid. So I managed that very closely, uh, but was at uh, about 98% when the power went out. Stormed really hard, had wind for about four hours, tons of trees down in the area. Um, you know bunch of big limbs in our backyard we actually had one dead one uh, puncture straight through our garage roof so I got that got up there and fixed it after the storm was over yesterday I picked up a bunch of limbs overall our property is is in pretty good shape comparatively to some in the neighborhood but uh, I think our power is going to be out for a long time given the walk this morning uh, here's a couple of pictures but uh, all within a two blocks of where we live so got a lot of lines to fix but anyway, you know, kind of managed the AC, but not too much. Didn't go above kind of 75, left it roughly where it was, made it through the day and actually had enough solar to balance off most of my usage and actually charge the battery a little bit um, and do lots of offsets. So by the time we went to bed last night, we were at uh, roughly 65 or 70 percent. Turned uh, the AC down a little bit, but still, you know, my brother-in-law's down in the basement. He's running at like 72. We had it at 73 upstairs. Woke up this morning to about 25% and the sun's about to hit the panels. Usually it hits at, a, at about 8 o'clock and really gets to full full power by 9 or 9.30. So I think we'll make it for, for a while here, but I'm going to have to be a bit more careful because it says that we might be out for a, a day or so more. So it'll be an interesting experiment here. Hopefully I don't run too much electricity and run us out, but so far so good. Well, I will add to this any kind of details as we go through this. They'll, they'll be short and sweet just to give kind of check-ins throughout the day of how the batteries work and when power comes back on. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. 
if you want to see the full solar install process, there will be a link right after this to the, um, the series I have going. Well, it's 24 hours later. The batteries just kicked about an hour or so ago. So we got basically 44 hours of the outage covered. Um, yes, I did turn down the AC or turn up the AC, whichever it is, uh, last night. So we'd get a little bit longer, but uh, hopefully the sun comes up soon and gets things started. Um, interesting that the power shuts down at 5% on the power wall. So it's probably like unusable but I think the reason they do that is they want to make sure there's enough to power up electronics when it goes cover some of the spikes when things turn back on uh, but also so it doesn't flicker at the end when it gets near zero anyway so that takes some of the capacity away but no big deal well it's gonna be an interesting um, couple more days it's supposed to storm today and tomorrow which means limited solar I'm gonna try and just make it so the fridge can keep going uh, maybe some of the lights, but probably not use the AC very much. And uh, the latest estimate right now is uh, four more days um, to get everything back up and running. So it'll be interesting. Well, it's two days later. Power's finally back on after 102 hours of being off. Um, and you might be able to tell my background's a little different here. Um, I actually left and went up to my parents' house because... The third problem was solar rolled in, um, and that was a second storm with a bunch of clouds. Now, uh, we had some on and off of power, but, uh, you know, for at least a day there, we were off. So we left, and, and glad we did, because the internet actually went down as they were repairing lines. Somebody must have taken out a Verizon Fios line. So, you know, even though our power's back up, our internet's still down. Probably head back today and, and hope it's back by the time we get there, but if not, at least we have power. And as you can see behind me, my parents don't have solar yet. It's, it's actually a really good roof for it. This gets sun almost all day. Um, I keep giving them my referral code, telling them about it, but they haven't done it yet. Anyway, if uh, these videos are helpful to you and you're thinking about getting solar or any of the Tesla energy products, use my referral code that's down in the description below. So a couple of things I learned before I close this one off. Um, first is when power goes down after a big storm, be a little gentle with uh, your usage for the first couple of days unless you know it's going to just be a short outage. If it's something big, you'll run out, you'll have a storm roll in, you'll wish you hadn't um, used, the, uh, used the power as much as you did, but you know that's something that's easily managed um, if you pay attention to it. The second thing is that uh, if you run a power wall to zero, it's not actually zero. It's roughly 5%. It seems like they keep a reserve. Um, I haven't exactly figured out how much power you need to trigger the system to come back on. You know, if the grid turns on, obviously that does that. But if solar comes up, there seems to be a threshold. I couldn't figure out what it was, but, uh, you know, we had it go on and off three times um, during the outage, you know, sun would charge it back up, my fridge would suck down all the electricity or the AC would come on because my Wi-Fi is not on and I can't turn the AC off uh, remotely anymore. But it would be good to know what the trigger is for when power walls turn back on. If, if you know what that threshold wattage is or the threshold percentage of the battery is, leave a comment down below. The third thing is, and this one's really nice, is that the gateway has a cellular chip in it. Um, given that my Wi-Fi was down, I thought I'd lose ability to see what was going on. Uh, but it very quickly just switched over cellular. I didn't even know the difference, um, and it could still see what was going on with the solar system. And then finally, it seems like Tesla has the ability and does change their uh, Powerwall software quite often. I think I got an update sometime mid-storm. Not totally sure that's correct, but um, something that happened midway through is that I started getting um, little short five-minute power blips at the beginning of every hour, and I'll show you over here somewhere. And this happened um, the, the second morning of the power being out and the battery being low. Um, seemed like it was just turning on to control some of those appliances that need power to uh, keep things cold, like fridges. So if you know anything about that, I haven't seen anything on the internet, but if you know anything, leave a comment below. Well, thanks again for watching. Um, I'll keep doing these videos. I'll add this one to the uh, solar playlist, which will be linked uh, at the end of this video. But check that out if you want to learn more about Tesla Solar, Tesla Powerwall, and, and my experience with it so far. Still waiting for permission to...
permission to operate. Um, I'm, I'm running it. Uh, I figured most of you figured that out by now. I'm just making sure the battery never gets high enough to feed back to the grid, but hopefully I get that soon so I can do a video on net metering and how that works out. But uh, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button down over here, and we'll see you on the next one.